Howdy, boys and girls. Uh, it is week 13, uh, very early in week 13 of the college football season, uh, and therefore also very early in week 13 of the Carla and Crappy Show. You guys are aware that what this week is. This week, uh, it's Omer Fudd week. It's Wivalry week. It is perhaps the most fun regular season weekend of the year because there are great games uh, throughout the entire schedule. We And it's we, we will we look forward to this. Every single every every single year, um, I don't think I can keep doing that for much longer. Uh, we have one other really special thing uh, to let you guys know about, and I think um, I, there's a, there's a, there's another person. On, there are two other people, but there's one person you guys haven't heard from for a long time. It's like a, a mystery guest. Say hello. Oh hi. <laughs> The actual titular characters are it's back. Like, there they are. I'm back. <laughs> um, Carla, Ellie has decided that that Carla is allowed to play with us once again. Um, <laughs> for the time mom, being, mom, it, well, mom's, we allowed hope, on an, mom's allowed on an internet play date. It's yeah, fine. Yeah. I, I, so I, I, I mean, we're gonna we're gonna take advantage of this as best we can. Uh, uh, hopefully, um, this will continue through through the conclusion of the season. Um, for, uh, Carla, how are you doing? How are you doing? We're doing okay. Yeah. Um, Ellie's Ellie's great. She's two months old today. Okay. Um, so Happy so we've made it to the birthday, dear Ellie. Yes, she's um she'll be uh getting her two month shots this week, so oh, that'll boy. be fun. Yeah. Um, family's coming for Thanksgiving, so but we're doing mm-hmm. we're doing great. Ellie's doing great sleeping. She's eating. She's growing like crazy. She's smiling and laughing. And okay. Um, do you yeah. have a do you have a sense of 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 uh, her college football fandoms yet? I mean, does she like poop more when Michigan's on or something? I I, I don't. How how, um, how is that going so far? Well, she tends to be a little bit more fussy when when Florida's playing. So there's that. I, I she'll, <laughs> she'll be happy to know that Dan Mullen is gone. So that's yes. that's good. Yes, that that's the thing. Um, other than that, um, she sleeps through Big Ten games, so it takes after AJ. Um, <laughs> that, that's right. That's right. Sleep through the nooners. It's not <laughs> worth it. Stay up with mom and watch Hawaii. That's how this works. <laughs> no, we, no, actually, we've actually, I, I actually haven't seen, my schedule is the opposite of eight, of yours, AJ. We, you know, you said you stayed up late because of the kids and that's how you got into the after dark thing. Um, mm-hmm. We're in bed early. Um, so, so hmm. I'm actually, I, when I, when we get up for a middle of the night feeding, that's when I'm scrolling through my, my sports app, looking at all the scores to see what all I missed and be checking our text thread because you all leave me all kinds of messages. So I go to sleep. So, so it's kind of a fun thing. You all keep me company while I'm up at three in the morning. Good. So yeah, it's, we're happy to so hear it's that. great. We're happy to hear. That. And while, you know, I listened, I've listened to every show. Mm-hmm. So I've, I've heard every show while I've been out. And um, well, I mean, I think it, cause your name's on it after all, I would, that would yeah. be, a, that would be I a new thing. To. It would be really weird if you didn't. You were like, hey, this is the Carl and Crappy show. All kinds of terrible things are being said with my name on the show. It'd it'd probably be bad. Yeah. Yeah. Out there. Well, listen, we have uh, uh, Carla is appearance. uh, It is actually brought to you by Ellie because um, Carla has worked out, you know, sort of schedules and things and and figured out how, how stuff is going in the past two months. Um, our recording schedule might be a little different because again, you know, we're, we're working with the, the whims of a very small person. Um, so like, like, for example, we are taping this on Sunday night. Uh, and you'll notice some differences because of that. I'll explain that as we go. Um, but for the meantime, uh, we have, we have to finish this up by bath time. So we have, <laughs> we have a fairly hard deadline to work with and we're just going to, we're, we're going to jump in right now. Um, Carla, it's been a long time since I've asked you this question. What was the best thing you saw in college football last weekend? I have a couple of very short things because yes, I actually okay. do watch quite a bit of football. It's just not super late in the evening. Um, <laughs> first of all, on, on, on Friday, um, I, I put this in our text thread. Um, how about Southern Miss winning a game, um, without a quarterback on their depth chart? Um, that was, <laughs> I watched the first half of that game. I mean, we went to bed at halftime because mm-hmm. you know, bedtime. Um, but I watched the first half of that game and just cackled the entire time. I'm like, they are playing this game without a quarterback. And they, then they held on. I woke up in the middle of the night feeding and looked, I'm like, and they won the game. 
Like, they won not the game. by a lot. <laughs> yeah, like it wasn't even close. Um, and, and something about Frank Gore Jr. throwing touchdown passes, just like it's awesome. It's, it is. It's awesome. So uh, they yeah. really just need to go like go back and just just run the single wing offense where there really isn't a quarterback. There's just kind of a couple of people who handle the ball and 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 yeah. let it rip. Yeah, it was pretty pretty impressive actually to kind of uh-huh. watch. Um the other thing, how about the mutes? Um, I'm, I'm very happy with the Utes right now. <laughs> <laughs> we, I think we were all happy with the Utes based on the way that we were texting each other during that game. Um, so, and that was another game that I watched up until about the third quarter and then we had to go to bed, but I, I felt very confident when I went to bed that that game was over. Um, and I was, so I was about the same boat. I, I was, I was beat and, and didn't stay up till the bitter end, but, but yeah, I was comfortable. So yeah, it'll be, so it'll be interesting. So as you said, we're recording this on Sunday. It's gonna be really interesting to see how the committee handles the top four now, now that we know that Oregon will, will be dropping out mm-hmm. um, and see where things go from there. Um, but probably the best thing I saw this weekend yes. had nothing to do with college football Oh, and had everything to do with a certain guest host's son winning a state title. There is that. Oh, that's right. There on is, that's, a goal that in scored. overtime. Okay, he scored. Yes. yes. So so congrats to to Kim and Oliver um for for winning this and Oliver especially for winning a state title at uh Eight at Winchester champions. Thurston in overtime. Um that was and the, Kim posted the video on on Twitter on Twitter and Facebook I think this oh, morning. Did she? I haven't seen um, it. Yet. Yeah, okay. of the goal and it's it's yeah. As as the text as the as the comment said, it was a banger. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he <laughs> he fires this rocket in. The goalie catches it mm. and falls into the goal. Like catches it and falls. <laughs> like he knocks him into the goal. It is an oh, absolute spectacular. rocket. Yeah, it's that's awesome. spectacular. I will. I, I mean, I, I will say. I, I you know, obviously, I've known Kim for a long time um, and spent some time at their house uh cooking stuff kim has the the awesomest kitchen in the existence and, i'm very jealous i've been very uh, jealous of her kitchen aid uh-huh. stand mixer like lifter uh, thing i've been very jealous stuff. of that crap for a very long time so <laughs> I, I've, I've been around oliver since you know he was barely walking mm-hmm. um and it didn't take long past that point where he just always has a soccer ball in front of him um yeah and and it is awesome to see that that has paid off for him i can't wait to see what that kid does uh, when when he moves on to college, I, I, I hope that's something that he's going to be able to continue. I suspect, I suspect it is. Um, AJ, best thing you saw? What you got? Uh, I watched all of the Hawaii game um, because what, I what, have a. What time did that end? Three a.m. Oof. Uh, so, I <clears throat> I decided I'm going to watch this game. And I'm watching Hawaii just cruise. Mm-hmm. They are on, they're rolling. In the third quarter, it was 36 10. Ooh, okay. And I went, okay, all right. Hey, Hawaii, you know what? I'm going to peace out on this game. And then Colorado State scores a touchdown to take it to 36 mm-hmm. 17. And then Hawaii punts. And then Colorado State scores a touchdown. I was like, Hawaii, please, I just want to go to bed. I just want to go to bed. <laughs> It's 36 24, and then touchdown, 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 touchdown. The game ends 50 to 45 at three in the morning. Absolute drugs, and I loved it. Also, I watched that's, that's it via worth, the. That's yeah. worth staying up for. Absolutely. It was worth staying up for. Also, I was watching it on the Spectrum Sports feed. So I was literally getting Hawaii Island commercials. Like the Chevy dealer for Hawaii, for like Oahu and the Honda dealer and some like hospitals. Like I was watching local TV in Hawaii. The internet is amazing, everyone. We've done it. So yes, <laughs> I stayed up the entire night to watch that. Also, uh, sidebar to UTSA. The finish to UTSA was fantastic uh, on a on a tipped pass to finish the game. In- okay. Incredible. Okay. Uh, I, I have I have two things uh i'm gonna mention uh you you mentioned spectrum i i didn't have to pay for this one because i was actually in columbus um my power my upper arlington golden bears beat pickerington central in three overtimes uh with a with just a killer play call a um a, a throwback screen um I, I, it was a spectacular game and 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 ua is uh undersized a uh, bunch of nice white kids um, should not have won that game. Mm-hmm. Um, uh, Pickering and Central could not keep them sa- stay out of their own way. Basically, uh, the, a lot of just ridiculous penalties that they uh, 
so many procedure penalties and stuff like that. Um, that earned them the right to go, uh, I think, to Mansfield, Ohio on Friday and play Lakewood St. Edwards. Um, I don't know what the, the line is for that game. It's probably if you're betting on uh, no, there is no line. If you're betting on high school football, you're an absolute degenerate. I, the first part, I wouldn't, I wouldn't, I wouldn't think that that Upper Arlington would be favored, but um, still, my Golden Bears are a win away from the state championship game um, for the first time since 2000. Uh, and I, I actually I saw them win that title in in the Hall of Fame uh, stadium outside of the um, the NFL Hall of Fame in Canton. Uh, one of the coldest nights of my life, by the way. But uh, so getting close, getting close. Go Bears. Uh, the great game on Friday. And then on Saturday, uh, this line for CJ Stroud, uh, 29 of 31, uh, 393 yards, six touchdowns in the first half. He did, he did not play in the second half. Uh, uh, much of the, the, the first team um, offense did not did not they rested at halftime i tweeted a thing at halftime and aj i know you saw this I, I am old enough to remember Woody hayes coached ohio state teams and they would they routinely put up 50 points while they while they beat you to death you know that's that's a, a full house t backfield and which 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 fullback's going to get the ball and, and that sort of stuff um i'm I, I'm a little cynical about John Cooper, but I, he he put together some amazing offenses, uh, especially like in the mid '90s. Um, I remember a game uh, it, uh, hosting Pitt in Columbus, and, and Ohio State uh, hung out seventy on him. Just just oof, wow. Okay, this is a whole different gear. This 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 Ohio State team. Um, we also got to see a, a, probably the best effort from Ohio State's defense, uh, which continues to improve every single time. Michigan State had no rush game. They, they simply could not. Uh, and so that combined with, um, you don't really have a chance to establish a rough game, rush game if you're down 21 points, you know, halfway through the first quarter. So that's that, that it works out that way as well. But uh, I, I've never seen anything like that offense. Um, in person, I know there have been crazy offenses all through the history of college football. This one, um, for me, is really different, and I'm curious to see what's going to happen from this point forward. Uh, I, I, as I said, we're taping this on Sunday. Um, I did not tell the other two people on this show that I was going to ask them this question, but it's, it's this presents us with an opportunity since we're doing this before this week's college football uh, playoff rankings come out. Um, what do you guys think? Who's, who's going to be your top four uh, when they announce this on Tuesday and, and your first team out? Um, Carla, welcome back. You go first. I go first. Ah, okay. Yes. Um, okay. Uh, Georgia one. Okay. That's easy. I would put Ohio state too. Okay. Um, based on what we saw on the field this week, I, I got Ohio state too. I've got Bama at three. Mm -hmm. I'm put Cincinnati in at four. Okay. Um, first one up. Who's, who's my first one out? Who's who's five right now. I'm blanking. Uh, Apparently five is five right now is Cincinnati. Five is Cincinnati right now. So you've already moved them. Okay. In, so I've moved them in. So that would mean that right now, based on what they have, I, I guess Michigan, I don't know who's the first one out. I, I mean, based, just based on, um, where they stand right now, I would think it would be Michigan, but I don't know who I would put there. Um, okay. I, I, th I think it could be Oklahoma state, depending on what happens this weekend. Um, I don't remember but, we're, pick we're picking for Tuesday. We're picking ahead of next weekend's game. So yeah. 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 I would, I would say, I would say Michigan is probably my first one out at right okay. now. Okay. AJ. Um, I'm going to just completely copy and paste. Cause that's exactly what I was thinking too. Ohio <laughs> state moves up to two. Mm -hmm. Emma slides a little bit to three Cincinnati goes in at four Michigan sitting there at five. Now what I need you all to understand deeply is that if Ohio state does what it will likely do and it already beat Michigan state and it beat Michigan and it beats Michigan on Saturday, mm -hmm. you know, who's sitting there waiting just 
just given the college football playoff committee, just the, just like a way out of this whole Cincinnati problem. It's Notre Dame. Notre Dame, yep. Notre Dame mm. sitting right there and Notre Dame is dying. The, the, the college football playoff is dying to put Notre Dame in. They don't want to put Cincinnati in. And you know what my favorite part is? Here's what I want to happen. All right. Let's say Ohio state beats Michigan. And Alabama yes. wins the Iron Bowl, and the top four is chalk, right? Mm-hmm. And Cincinnati goes out, and they they play ECU this weekend. Doesn't matter. They beat ECU, and then they win the AAC, right? Yes. So you've got an undefeated conference champion AAC with a win over Notre Dame on yes. the roster, by the way, in South Bend. Yes, yes. I want the college football playoff to have to do their like mental gymnastics to try and explain why Notre Dame, even though they lost to this Cincinnati team is going to get into the playoff and Cincinnati's not going to be in it. They can't. Yes, they can. They absolutely can. They've had Michigan. I I know they, I know they can. I'm sorry. They've had Michigan ahead of Michigan state for the last like three weeks, man. They can do whatever they want. This is the better looking team on paper or up to our eye test or whatever they want to. They can make it up. They can just say they could body clock Cincinnati out of this whole thing. They can just done. I want to see it happen. And that's the thing that I fully believe is going to fully kick off playoff expansion to say, mm-hmm. how did you not put in Cincinnati when they ran the table undefeated conference champion? And they, and you've always made this big deal about how conference championships matter. Mm-hmm. I mean, except for that one time that, wait, Ohio State got in and Penn State. There was, well, there was, sorry, crap. Sorry, we did that thing There again. was that. That was a mistake. There didn't was. We didn't, we, didn't, we didn't mean it. I really want to see <laughs> Notre Dame. I want to see this Notre Dame-Cincinnati college football playoff. I, like, that is an gym, Mental yeah. gymnastics. Ooh, that I'm not flexible thing. enough for that. Uh, my, my top four is the same. Um, I, 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 I am probably under ranking the team up north just because of of uh, uh of, of circumstances uh because it, the way it is the week that it is i i would have a hard time picking between notre dame and michigan um for for the first team out note I, I, notre dame has looked really impressive recently <clears throat> um against eh? uh you know the, the fact that they're playing stanford this weekend does not help them um uh, certainly, if the if the team up north uh, were to somehow manage to win on Saturday, that would uh, that would blow up a lot of this stuff. But I I I, I will give a slight edge to Notre Dame, at number five. But at, at this at this point, they're they're like five A and five B, um, and that, that I think that stuff will work itself out. Uh, I'm not um, sure that the, the committee is going to be able to avoid your question, AJ. I, I, I that's, I, <laughs> so that, let's, let's just say yeah. that uh, like Ohio state. So how would this work for the Rose bowl? It would be the highest ranked. It's the highest ranked big 10 team that isn't in the playoff. Right. Yes. For the Rose bowl. Yes. So that's probably likely unless Ohio state goes out completely vaporizes Michigan and the playoff committee is like, yeah, we've seen enough here. We're going to drop them like way down and bring Wisconsin mm-hmm. up for the, mm-hmm. for the title, for the big, big 10 title game. You could potentially get a Notre Dame, Michigan Rose bowl. Oh, that'd be fun. Or Notre Dame, Michigan Fiesta bowl mm-hmm. somewhere in there. Actually, no, Michigan's going to go to the Rose bowl. They would have to like overlook Oregon in the PAC 12 to put Notre Dame in the Rose bowl, which would be sacri- sacrilegious. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, I'm, I'm guessing you're going to get an Oregon, Michigan, um, big 10, not if or Rose bowl, not if Utah beats them again. What was that? Yeah. There's Utah that. beats him again. Yeah. I don't know what I, then you, then you get a Utah, Michigan. Oh God. Oh God. I just thought of the rock fight. That game would be Ugh. Ah, ah, this, listen, ah. the third, the third quarter with the sunset in the mountains doesn't deserve this garbage is going to be happening on the field. <laughs> I mean, Carla, you, Stanford, Iowa was the same yeah. way. So, yeah, yeah, Carla. I mean, if if uh, since he wins out, Notre Dame wins out. Who you got? I haven't seen enough 
Notre Dame to be able to make a because I, I avoid Notre Dame. That's just, you know, people who have listened to this show All know should. that I avoid Notre Dame. I will, um, everyone we're, should. We are so I, I went to a small school, right? I'm I and I teach it. I, I work at a group of five school. Um, mm-hmm. I I'm always going to put Cincinnati in. I, okay. I, I just, I, you're un, you're undefeated. Um, and they did what they could with their schedule and they have a, a, a solid win over a group of, or over a power five team mm-hmm. at, at their, at their house. Yeah. Um, it, it, I, I, Cincinnati's four. Okay. Okay. Uh, guys, I say at the end of every show, you know, you check back next week and see how wrong we were. Um, you don't have to wait till next week. Um, I'm going to try to have this posted on Tuesday before the rankings are released. So you'll be able to like in real time, almost you'll be able to hear exactly how wrong we were. Um, we, we have a ton of games to get through, but before we do, I'm going to wrap up, uh, this year's big 10, big 10, big red bears report. Um, the uh, uh, Cornell finished uh, with a loss to uh, rival Columbia, 34, 26 tight game. Um, I, and I, I admit, I did not see this. Uh, Cornell went out, uh, was up uh, two touchdowns early, a lot of penalties. You can see that in the box score um, led to the, led, led to the loss. Uh, the big red finished one and six in the league, uh, two and eight overall. Interesting thing next season. Um, they're going to be, they are really, really senior heavy. Um, I'm not sure that experience translated into the, a lot of quality on the field, but they will, they will be really young uh, next, next season. That should translate into a lot more time uh, at tailback for Drew White Shoes Powell, who is also my nephew. Um, but it also could mean a, a pretty tough year in terms of ones and losses, wins and losses. Uh, we will see how that goes, but um, it has been fun. The uh, uh, announcing slash production quality aside, um, but it's been it has been cool watching them go through the season, uh, and I look forward. I, we're we're doing that again next year, uh, guys. If if Carly Crappy shows here, you can look forward to more of uh, the the Big Red Bears report. Okay. <sighs> Rivalry week. I said it correctly there for a change. Let's go. No. Okay. Let's go. A couple things to point out. I, I we're, we're not. I did not include rankings in this. Um, the AP ranking at this point don't, don't really matter. match up with the with the the, the playoff rankings. And they and then as AJ said, they don't really matter. Um, it doesn't matter. It's rivalry week. You take these old records off the shelf. Throw them. Throw them out the window. Throw, throw them the out records, the window. Throw the records. Records out the window. Out the window. Uh, also important to know, I'm not. I hope no one is listening to this show for gambling purposes because that would be really dumb. No. But no. you should but, you should not do that. You should be consulting. The, you should be consulting some advanced actual, analytics, actual some. actual experts. Um, but so I'm, I'm including the stuff that we always include. Keep in mind, we are taping this on Sunday. It is stupid early in the week. So. There is closing Great. line value. I'm not saying anything. I'm just saying, listen to what we say yeah. and maybe bet against it. Who's to say? That, Who's to say? That's, that's Get probably, it early while you can. That's probably not a not bad advice, actually. Um, schedule. Here we go. Thursday, 3.30. I, I, this, this is such a great weekend because the games start in the middle of the week and it's like, it's 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 like the extension of, of the bowl season because you've got games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, boom, 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 boom. Thursday at 3.30, Fresno State at San Jose State. Fresno is favored by seven and a half. The AJ fun index in this game is 52.5. AJ, we're going to let you start this one. So this is normally, by the way, this is Thanksgiving Thursday. Mm-hmm. You're going to be with your relatives. Mm-hmm. And this is where you can introduce your relatives to the magic that is Jake Hayner. Um, this is on during the, the traditional end of the lion slot and going don't, into the don't cowboy watch, slot. Don't watch you don't NFL. need to do either of these things. The NFL Fresno state is Ugh. here for you. Yes. They're here to save you. You don't have to watch From... the like nine legged Turkey, whatever the hell the end of the Detroit <laughs> game is You know exactly <laughs> what I'm talking about. The John Madden special with like the nine legs. We're giving a Turkey leg over here to this guy. Cause he ran for a bunch of yards. In this no, get out of here. Get out of here. Watch this game. San Jose state has had an up and down season. They're playing for bowl eligibility in this game. Okay. 
Fresno State locked up a bowl. Uh, Jake Hayner, though, is amazing, and you should watch this game. It'll be beautiful. Also, you can explain to your family and friends, uh, whoever you may be having this meal with, uh, why San Jose State only has half a stadium, and that's because they're renovating it. It'll have stands on the other side at some point, but they've been renovating the entire half of the stadium that you see on TV. So uh, bring, bring that up and, and you will look really smart. <clears throat> You'll look super smart. And like, you've like done a ton of research instead. You've just listened to me on the internet occasionally. So um, yes. So Fresno state, San Jose state, I expect Fresno state to cruise here, but listen, you don't have to watch Dallas or Detroit. No, no. And who wants to do that? Uh, Carla, what do you think? I'm, I'm definitely in favor of not watching Dallas or Detroit. That's for sure. Um, <clears throat> so Having not seen a ton of either of these teams this year, unfortunately, mm-hmm. because as we discussed, I don't have ESPN plus. Mm-hmm. Um, so <laughs> unfortunately they, they end up with a lot of games there. Um, yeah. Fresno having a good season has an incredible quarterback. Um, I, I, I will be, um, ha- I will probably have this game on mute. My nephews are all coming. Um, they started okay. playing. They, they started. Yeah, I know. We're going to have a house full. <laughs> um, <they're, laughs> they've, they've started playing flag football. Um, And so they are suddenly taking an interest in football. And so this is an excellent time to show them that there are, there are schools outside of the power five and Mm -hmm. that they play good football and they sometimes play in slightly ridiculous stadiums that are being renovated. So um, Fresno, sure. Sweet. Um, I'm, I am sticking with Fresno. I did get to see a a couple games early in the season and they, I mean, they stumbled a bit since, but they, they looked like a, a complete team. Uh, when back in September, early October. Um, so yeah, I, I, for me, Fresno State, uh, Fresno State is the pick here. Seven thirty p.m. I have does, do you, Why is this called the Egg Bowl? Um, I, I don't. I don't even know. This is uh, Old Miss oh. at Mississippi State. State is favored by one at this stage. Um, the AJ Fun Index is a sixty point five, which seems low to me. Or I, maybe I'm just. I was expecting more, but. Um, uh, uh, Carla, I'm going to let you go first. Wow. First time I've gotten first in how many weeks? It's been um, a while. It's been a while. Yeah. It put me on the spot. Um, okay. So I think this is the game that to me, this is the rivalry game that feels like it's the most up in the air. Um, I, I feel like this game could, could go either way. And the big, the big question here is the Mississippi state defense. Can it slow down uh, Matt Corral, who was at one point a Heisman in the Heisman conversation, mm-hmm. um, and, and that Kiffin hurry up offense. I mean, it's, if you haven't seen the Ole Miss offense in action, it's absurd how fast they go between plays. I mean, it's just that it gives any defense problems. Um, and so simply can the Mississippi state defense keep up? Um, Mississippi state is not great against the pass, which is not great when you're going up against a, a, a quarterback that was, you know, in the Heisman conversation, Ouch. but the catch here is, Ole Miss is not good against the pass either. And the Mississippi state offense is entirely Will Rogers arm Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. entirely Mm -hmm. Mississippi state playing at home. This is going to, I think this is, I, I I agree. The AJ fund index is low. Um, I think this game is going to get stupid fast. Um, And when that happens, you've got two coaches that both love the stupid. Uh, they're, they're both lunatics. They, they're both they're lunatics. Certifiable so I, so lunatics. I'm going to lean with the one who's a little bit more lunatic, and I'm going to say Leach figures out a way to pull this one out. Oh, I, I, like I, 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 this game down to the, down to the end. I, this is this is must see TV. I don't care who's playing the late game, the late NFL game on Thanksgiving night. Fix it because we make this reference every year. Fix another bowl of mashed potatoes. Sit down on your couch. <laughs> right. Right. And watch the freaking egg bowl. You guys couldn't see AJ on camera, but he is he is clearly stoked about this game in general and and perhaps about Carla's pick in particular. AJ. Uh the late the late game on Thursday is Bills at Saints, which LOL, don't care. Uh, um yeah. I don't care. Uh because yeah. the egg bowl is on. The egg bowl is a much better game because of the sheer just absolute lunacy of this game and of this rivalry one uh the egg is actually uh from the egg trophy that was created because um okay uh, after uh their th- uh, 1926 game yes. uh Ole Miss fans rushed the field irate Aggie supporters took after the ambitious Ole Miss group with cane bottom chairs and fights broke out and so <laughs> they decided to create the golden egg which is a very large trophy balls footballs 
were in the in the twenties were much rounder than they are today. Yes, and so like they're a very rugby, a rugby ball. A rugby ball. It's much thing. more like a rugby ball. Yeah. And so uh, the the trophy was based off of that ball, which looks more egg like. And uh, Claire and Ledger sports writer Tom Patterson in 1979 started calling this game the Egg Bowl. Um, yes. Perfect. By the way, both of these coaches are in this position. They're both lunatics, but we have to remember the real reason why they're both in this position. And that is a, uh, a receiver from Ole Miss pantomiming a dog peeing in the end zone and got both coaches eventually fired. Just if you go back and look at that, it ended up being honestly 500 people changed jobs because of that. Yeah. <laughs> Across coaching staffs and different schools. Cause like if, the, cause okay, Lane Kiffin gets hired. So he's out of FAU. So now FAU needs a coach, right? you got to follow the whole carousel. The dominoes, yep. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, I fully believe that Lane Kiffin is going to go pull all the tricks out of the back and he's going to try and win this game. I love the Mike Leach pick because Mike Leach is a maniac too. And I was just swashbuckling for the pirate himself. Yes. Um, yeah. I expect the hammer, the over number one, number yeah. two. Yes. You should be putting on extra mashed potatoes, pull out a night ham if you can. And just go after this. This game is going to be way better than any NFL game. You're going to see on Thursday or potentially all season. Uh, go watch this game. I have Ole Miss. Ah, uh, I am. I, I, I the, the 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 defensive issues on both sides of the ball will is, are the thing that's going to make this super interesting. Um, that is also why you you look at this over under number and it's like, like come on, come on. Maybe for the first um, half. I just uh, that's yeah, right. Uh, I actually, I, I again, we're we're taping early in the week. I expect that's. Uh, I don't know how how much those numbers change in the course of a week, but that's got to go up. It's got to. Um. Who is crazier? I I I, I think uh, I, I think Mike Leach is is actually um it, it is actually mentally ill. I think he <laughs> I, I, I I think he is he I I think he is the one um who who's going to try the most kind of weird stuff. I don't know. It's, it's, it's a difficult thing to say. I'm sick. I'm sticking with Ole, uh, with Ole Miss, with uh, Mississippi state home field, um, slightly crazier coach. Uh, you know what we're doing? Uh, I did. Yeah. Yeah. We're, we're going to, we're going to stick with Mississippi state in this one and see what happens. Uh, we continue on Friday on Friday. That's why this weekend is so awesome. At noon, uh, Boise State. There are there are a ton of games on Friday. We're gonna we're gonna we're just gonna talk about one of them. Boise State at San Diego State. Boise is favored by two and a half. The uh, AJ Fun Index is a very Miss Western Midwestern forty four points. Um, that is probably largely due to the the presence of of Brady Hoke on the field. Uh, uh, AJ, this yeah. one is yours to go first. So. I'm going to call this uh, this this game has a potential to get really weird and an incredibly slow start because I would like to point out that this game is being played in Carson, California mm-hmm. at noon Eastern, mm-hmm. which means this is a 9 a.m. kickoff locally. This is absolutely dastardly, but it's on national television. So that means that everyone across the country after watching the, Oh no, that's on Thursday after watching, you know, you're waking up. It's, it's, you know, you're, you're you know, you're kind of tucked in after some Turkey, you're, you're waking up and guess what? You get to watch the punt God go crazy. Cause this game is going to be bad, but good, but also bad. bad. Yes. Right. Yes. This game does not, this game is three and outs all over. Uh-huh. Right. Boise state actually has a pretty decent defense. Boise's come around mm-hmm. towards the latter half of the season um, where they're definitely coming out and putting, putting a hurt on folks. Now San Diego state is built to get out to a lead and then sit on you mm-hmm. and then just constantly flip the field and just let Matt Areza. He had five punts inside the 20 last week, five. He punted six times. Like Brady, Brady Hook does not want to hear this, but that's, that's trestle ball. Actually Brady Hook doesn't listen, Brady, come on. You mean to tell me that Brady Hoke didn't go to San Diego State and go, you know what? All these highfalutin offenses out here. Mm-mm. Give me, give me this godlike <laughs> punter and this running game with Rocky Long, and we're gonna do work out here. They're ranked 19th and they're 10 and 1. <laughs> Good job, Brady Hoke. San Diego State wins. Carla, what do you think? 
yeah, I we're here for the punts, right? <laughs> That's <laughs> I, I and and we get to watch. The, the, is the air quality different at nine in the morning? Is that going to impact? Uh, that's, that's a, a good question. point. That's, that's a good, a good question. Point. I don't know. Uh, funny enough, Matareza is a computer science major and has studied like ball aerodynamics. Like he's he's thought about this way more than pretty much any other punter where they're just like, okay, I'll hold it this way. And if I kick it the right way, it'll go the way I want it to. And he's like, no, I'm studying everything. Like he's got a favorite mm-hmm. punter and he mm-hmm. studies stuff. There's an ESPN piece about it. You should go read it. But okay. just remember you heard it from us first. Okay. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I San Diego State is just kind of like they kind of feel like the coastal of last year to an extent, like the darling that that that, that yeah. people want to get yeah, behind. I got you. I got you. Because, that's to me, that's UTSA. But yes, I see yeah, where you're going. Yeah, UTSA is there. Um, but you know they've got the the punter that's kind of become a viral sensation. Um, if, if college football sickos. If you've, that's, we're here. yeah, people, people uh-huh. staying yes. up to watch, yes. to watch yes. the punters. Yes. Um, and I love the fact that Brady Hoke is being successful on the West coast. Like I just makes that makes my heart feel good. I feel like he got, he got a raw deal, um, getting fired out of Michigan. And so mm-hmm. like, I, it's, it, I like seeing him succeed that I love the story of the punter. Boise's had their time in the sun, San Diego state. Okay. By the way, okay. we love to see Brady Hoke out on the West Coast because that man looks like he is thriving. We th- he's this- lost. He's he's easily lost like forty pounds. Yeah, tan and like that. He's tanned up. He's he's playing games and he's like there's like zero pressure. That man is thriving out there. Good for you, Brady Hoke. This is absolutely and AJ AJ brought that up uh, earlier in the season. We we talked about uh, the San Diego State for the first time. Uh, one of the, 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 the September early October shows. Um. And I, I, I feel good for Brady. I, I, I did not have the hatred for Brady. Um, he just, I, I felt like he never got the support in, in that, in the town up there. And uh, I, uh, which is unfortunate. Um, he, he was totally loyal to Lloyd Carr, to the school. Um, but you know what? He landed in a place that was much better situation. Um, there is no pressure. The sun shines all the time, and you can you can tell. I mean, the the tan with the black shirts and stuff. He's he, he looks amazing. Um, he has put together uh, a, a team that you know easily recognizable as the as a team that would be assembled by a Michigan man. Um, and especially his the defense, which is his specialty. Um, punting. Totally, this is totally trestle ball, but uh, you know, he, I, I'm sure he doesn't want to hear that. But it works, it works, and it has worked for him, especially this year. So, Aztecs uh, beat Boise on uh, on Friday. Um, you can continue watching college football all the way through Friday, uh, starting at noon and in probably deep into the night without me looking directly at the schedule. Saturday, uh, hey, real quick, real quick, yes, I please, just need a please. quick, just quick, quick lightning round here. Yeah. Does Nebraska lose another close game to Iowa? Yes. Just man, Nebraska's got to break through sometime. I mean, my dad and I were talking about that yesterday when I I I, I woke up from nap and we watched the, watched the end of 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 Nebraska and Wisconsin, and it's like this is this is a really good team, and how do they not? They they've got to figure out how to win someday. Um, I I'm still gonna pick Iowa. Right. Gonna, yeah. That's all. Yeah. We can continue on. Okay. Okay. Saturday. Big Nude has the game um, playing for the first time in two years, thanks to the COVID or whatever else was going on in Ann Arbor at the time. Uh, Ohio State versus the team up north. OSU in early odds is favored by eight. There's an AJ Fun index of 64. Carla? So we all saw what what your, what your Buckeyes did to, to Sparty. Right. Right. Um, offense on the Ohio state side. And the big question here is, can the Michigan defense put up enough of a speed bump mm-hmm. to slow down the, the Ohio state offense? Because the Ohio state defense has the potential to make Michigan one dimensional mm-hmm. by shutting down the run run game. Mm-hmm. Do we really think Michigan can survive on the arm of Cade McNamara? Cause that's essentially what we're looking at here. I, I the, know what the, my, my answer is. If the Michigan defense can speed bump Ohio state, 
can Cade McNamara do enough for Michigan to lead them to be, to win the game? I'm going to say the answer is no. I think this game is much different than what we saw last week, mm-hmm. but I think Ohio state still makes a statement here. Okay. Bucks win. Okay. AJ. Uh, before I get too far into this, shout out to Blake Corum going to Ypsilanti uh, and giving away turkeys with his NIL money. You're a good, you're a good dude, Blake nice. Corum. So just want to throw that one out there. That is now, cool. That is very cool. Um, yeah, I think Ohio State is going to do is going to attempt at least to do what they did to Purdue and do what they did to Michigan State, which is we're going to attempt to vaporize you by halftime and then sit on you for the second half, mm-hmm. which is funny enough what Oregon's been doing for the last like <laughs> six weeks. But right, right. This is this is the Oregon. This is Oregon pre Utah. This is what. Ohio State's done the past few weeks is they want to get out to a lead Mm -hmm. and then sit on it and they have Travion Henderson who can just do that right Mm -hmm. and they have Master Teague they have a couple other running backs where they they want to do this where they just blow past you and make you keep up what's Michigan strength their running game if this is the same thing with Michigan State right Michigan State strength with Kenneth Walker the third Kenneth Walker the third is not going to score 28 is not going to score 28 points by himself in short order. It's going to take yep. a while. Right. So what Ohio state's going to try and do is jump out to an early lead as quickly as they can. And then Ohio state's defense is going to shut down Michigan's Michigan's running game as much as possible and try and make Cade McNamara beat them. I don't think he can. He's not looked, they've not had to lean on him all year. Mm-hmm. I don't think now is the time to do it. I think Ohio state gets the win. Okay. That's, uh, and that's, that has, has evolved into um, what, what is essentially the game plan. And it takes some pressure off the defense because, um, you know, Mich- Michigan state wants to run Walker. Um, they, they want to uh, possess the ball. They want to control possession time. Um, and then, you know, and then hit a big play once in a while, but you, you can't follow that excuse me, you can't follow that plan if you're down 28 points um, in the first half. Uh, Michigan will have to come up with uh, a remarkable defensive effort. Um, and I, and, and I, I, this is, uh, I think, the best defense that Ohio State has seen uh, – it's, it's, yeah, I, I, I'm, yes, it, it better better than Penn State's incrementally. Um, so that's that's a that's a question that I have. But the offense is too much. It it, it is too much. Um, and, and and if Ohio State gets builds an early lead, and then you know Michigan has no choice but to throw the ball. Um, that's not what they've wanted to do all season. Uh, they, they they can a little bit and 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 I I will I give I I make fun of Jim Harbaugh on this show all the time, um but but Jimmy has put together his most complete team to date this season, um so you know you always have that in the back of your mind. Uh, he's it, it, they the Michigan doesn't have enough they 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 don't have enough to keep up, um. And and it, you know if Ohio State when when Ohio State. Uh, opens up a big lead and then runs, runs, runs. Uh, hits hits a long play action occasionally. Um, this is this is, could not only be a win, but it, it could be a big win. I'm wearing my my '62 jersey from uh, the the Michigan game a couple of years ago, a few years ago, uh, when when uh, one of Urban's teams put up that many points. On the Wolverines, I, that that's not going to happen. Um, this is a this is a better Michigan defense, but um, this could be a big one. This could be big. Uh, Two p.m. on Saturday. I'm hopeful that that my game is over by then, and I can watch this or put it on the second TV or something. UTSA meet me at North Texas. Uh, meet me is favored by twelve. AJ yeah. Fun Index of 59.5. My speed round question, um, and Carl, one word answer. Is UTSA the best team in Texas right now? Do 
Mm. I, <laughs> that's a heck of a question. Um, <laughs> I'm going to begrudgingly say no. Okay. Close, cl- a close. No, that's fine. AJ, we're no. AJ uh, answer the question and then go ahead with your pick. Uh, no. Okay. Uh, if I had to pick the best team in Texas, it's A&M. Okay. Um, but mm-hmm. uh, I just wanted to keep eyes on this game. UTSA going for undefeated in the regular season. They've already locked up uh, a spot in the CUSA title game by beating um, who they beat, they beat whoever they beat last week. I'm blanking. UAB. That's uh, right. Yeah. So yeah, by UAB. beating UAB the last Blazers. week, they locked up the spot in the, uh, the CUSA title game uh, where they will play Western Kentucky, I believe, which is going to be – amazing i'm just so excited for that game anyways we'll talk about that next week that's next week we will we will so talk about utsa just keep an eye on this game keep an eye on this game scoreboard watch this game i expect utsa to roll north texas playing for bowl eligibility with seth luttrell okay so motivation this could get that's a good. little spicy right okay There's stakes to this game okay carla yeah, north texas hasn't what they have been in the past couple of years north texas yeah. has been in the mix in the cusa for a while and, and they're just not doing that this year this is utsa's year um i yeah meet me Okay, beat me. I'm 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 beat me all the way on this one. Um, and that will be that will be a fun title game to uh both talk about and watch next weekend. But um, that's that's getting ahead of ourselves a little bit. At three thirty, uh, another game with a with a, a nickname, the Iron Bowl, Alabama at Auburn. Bama is favored by nineteen. Um, the AJ Fun Index is a disappointing fifty five. Uh, I, I know there was talk about Auburn upsetting Alabama, but, but, uh, but after last weekend, it's like, eh, is that gonna, eh, I don't know. Um, Carla, I'm going to give you first crack at this because of our history with Bo Nix. Yes. What do you, <laughs> what do you think about this? Yeah. Um, I, I understand, I, I didn't understand the, the, picking Auburn as kind of like saying that was going to be the hot pick this, this year is that mm-hmm. Auburn had a chance in this game. Um, and I understand where that came from. When you look at the two teams, statistically, if you just look at the numbers on paper um, yards per game, yards allowed per game, nearly identical between mm-hmm. these two teams. Um, but the problem is that you can't just look at the numbers, right? Um, Bama's defense is really, really good against the run which means that it's probably going to be a long day for maybe this Auburn has like the all name team for, for one of the best named running backs in all of college football and tank Bigsby. Um, so it's going to be a a long game for tank Bigsby, which means Auburn will be relying on the arm of Bo (laughs) Nix. I hate to say this. I would love to see the upset because Auburn's playing at home. Mm-hmm. I would I would love to see the upset here, but it's a two thirty kick, not a not a six p.m. kick. Mm-hmm. I, roll damn. Time. I I regret to inform you that you don't need you don't need to worry about the arm of Bo Nix because he can't rely on his ankle. He has have he has had surgery to repair his broken ankle and he is now out. Oh. So Bo, so oh. you don't even have to worry about Bo Nix. He ain't even playing. Okay, then yeah, roll damn yeah, tide. That, unfortunately, that's, that's that's an easy pick then. Yeah, Bonix uh, did not play. Uh, f- oh, uh, T.J. Finley. Uh, I for some reason I thought this was the same T.J. Finley from uh, NC State. It is not. Okay, uh, maybe it is. No, it was T.J. Finley, formerly of LSU. Um, <laughs> so yes, so T.J. Finley is a sophomore. He is six seven. God bless that man's tall. Anyways, we have a so here's the thing. We have an unknown quarterback situation. Right. You've got one game of film on him. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Auburn Jesus coming to town because th- this game's a Jordan Hare. Six, <laughs> six, kick six, kick <laughs> six, kick six. <laughs> I'm still going at I'm still going Bama, but eh? Like if this game's close in the middle of the second quarter, I'm going to go, maybe. Hmm. But Bryce Young also threw for 500 yards last week. So (laughs) there's there's that. There's also that. I will, I I will say uh, the kick six game. I was actually uh, at at the completion of, of uh, Ohio state and the team up North. um, I went outside and was hanging outside Christmas lights. I will probably be doing the same thing on Saturday. Um, 
So maybe, maybe if there's a connection there, I'm hoping. I, I, I am definitely hoping. However, um, without Bo Nix, uh, it, 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 no, it's it's <laughs> the you, you you gotta go with Alabama on this one. Uh, also at three thirty, Civil War, um, and this is this has potential to impact the Pac-12 title game. Oregon State at Oregon, the Ducks are favored by a touchdown. The AJ Fund Index is 61. Uh, the, the AJ, please take this. So uh, Oregon State is bull eligible for the first time in like almost 10 years, mm -hmm. right? So go beef. Chainsaw, turn over chainsaw forever. Oregon State has looked really good. Oregon has looked, looked really suspect against Utah last week. A uh, bit of a look ahead game. Maybe they were like, well, hey, we're going to see Utah in a little bit anyway, so we're not going to really worry about this game. Oregon State has the potential, if they beat Oregon and some other things happen, to sneak their way into the Pac-12 title game over Oregon, which is something I want deeply. Go Beefs. <laughs> Go Beefs. Uh, Carla? Yeah, that's I, I was gonna say the similar thing here, not um not not necessarily because of that reason. Um, Oregon State actually fired their defensive coordinator partway through the season, mm -hmm. um, and that's the that's the question mark here because Oregon State hasn't faced an offense like Oregon yet. That their wins since that firing happened were over Stanford and Arizona State. Womp womp. Um, so so we're gonna see if this this Oregon State defense um, can can keep up with an offense like Oregon, but Oregon's reeling right now. Mm -hmm. Right. So you're getting you're getting a wounded duck, literally. Um, Whack. <laughs> mom jokes are real. I know. Right. I'm ah. all about the mom jokes. Um, as the text thread knows, I'm all about the mom jokes right now. Um, my high school mascot was the Beavers. Um, so so I've always felt an affinity for for Oregon State. Um, I would love to see them win this game at home and have chaos happen. And we all know the Pac-12 eats its young. So yeah. this is a perfect scenario. Oregon State, what the heck? I'm 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 with you. Beeves, go Beeves. I think this is a I think that's a win there. Um uh, real quick and and mostly because this has the best AJ fund index of all the games we're picking. Western mm -hmm. Kentucky at Marshall. Marshall's favored by one at this point. Um, the, the AJ fund index is a, it is a whopping 75 points. Mm -hmm. Um, the AJ very uh, briefly, what you got? Uh, these two teams truly hate each other. Like this is one of those like sneaky rivalries you don't know about Western Kentucky and Marshall straight up hate each other. Um, this game does feature Bailey Zapp. If I may read his season statistics so far, again, they have not played Marshall to finish the season. Bailey's app is 381 of 532 for 4,640 yards and 48 touchdowns. He's the, he's the best quarterback you don't know about. Uh, Bailey's app is awesome. Western Kentucky is zooming. Uh, and yeah, this game should be stupid and fun and they hate each other and they're playing it in a day in a, probably a wet, cold Huntington, West Virginia. Uh -huh. I love this game. Uh, and it should be super fun. You should watch this game. Uh, at the same time as uh, some little Penn State, Michigan State game, no one cares. Um, Western Kentucky Marshall is where you should be putting your television, CBS, SN, the Network of Champions. Okay. Uh, Carla, you got a pick? I, I, because I teach at MTSU and I'm not allowed to, to pull for anything that Western Kentucky does, um, mm -hmm. Marshall, sure. Okay. But yes, this okay. game is going to be stupid fun. I'm, I'm going to lean Western here, I think. Um, but uh, yeah, this is, this is a game that, that you definitely want to watch. Uh, 7.30, Bedlam. Um, uh, it, there's, a, there's a problem in Oklahoma State that resembles the aforementioned John Cooper uh, in, in that, that they, they, they don't beat Oklahoma like ever. So uh, Carla, what do you think here? Uh, it's been a long time since Oklahoma State has entered this game ranked higher than Oklahoma and mm -hmm. also favored to win this game. It's been what uh, at least by three point five by by three point five. I did not do the numbers. Um, Cowboys are up are favored by three and a half, and the AG yeah. Fund Index is fifty two. Yeah, it's it's been a long time. It's got it's got to be at least five or six years since since Oklahoma State has entered this game ranked higher and favored. Mm -hmm. um, 
Sooners have been sketch all season. We know this. Yes. Um, and uh, Oklahoma State actually plays defense. I mm-hmm. know they're in the Big 12. Don't tell them they're doing their very best Big 10 defense impersonation. Don't and they don't even anybody. have a Big 10 offensive co- or defensive coordinator. Don't um, tell anybody. Particularly against the run. Yeah. They have the number four rush defense in the freaking country. Oklahoma yeah. State, number yeah. four. That's crazy. Enough about the Big 12 not having not playing defense. Oklahoma wait, wait, wait. State is playing some defense. Spencer Sanders, Oklahoma State's quarterback, hasn't been a national name, but he has you know nearly 2,000 yards passing. Jalen Warren is a 1,000-yard back already this season. Mm-hmm. What the heck? Go Pokes. And just to clear up your question from last week, yes. if they play again in a Big 12 title game, that would not be considered Bethlehem because it would be played on a neutral field. Mm-hmm. Good point. Mm, okay. Good point. Good point. AJ. Um, as always, Bedlam is Bedlam is uh, Oklahoma wins by a lot, a little bit, or not enough. Um, I somehow see Oklahoma State maybe pulling this one out. But every time we think that, it's when Oklahoma goes, all right, little brother, and then ships it on its way. Uh, I saw uh, on Saturday, uh, someone referred to Oklahoma State while they were playing Texas Tech as dollar store Georgia, where they're like, <laughs> oh, oh, wow. Their, dollars, their dollar store Georgia, where they're like, hey, their offense is like, okay, I, mm-hmm. I guess. They, mm-hmm. they don't have the traditional Big 12, Mike Gundy, super crazy offense. As, as Carla just mentioned, Spencer Sanders has less than 2,000 yards passing mm-hmm. on the season, mm-hmm. right? But they are going to kill you on defense. And that is dollar store Georgia. So um, I can totally see a world in which they just say, hey, Caleb, come beat us. You're not pulling that 74-yard random BS touchdown on us. Mm -mm. No, you are not. I'm going to kill you when you come across the middle. So give me the pokes. Uh, Sure. Let's let's do it. Let's have actual bedlam where Oklahoma State actually wins. (laughs) John Cooper did beat Michigan a couple times. Um, it, it can happen. Uh, and, and in this instance, it looks like it should, uh, with, with the defense, uh, the, the Oklahoma is, uh, who knows what the mental state there in, in Norman is, but, um, uh, folks, uh, they, they are going to, they are going to win this one. Um, and, and ha ha, then we have, uh, the true bedlam in the, in, in, in the big 12, uh, AJ, the last game that you wanted to talk to, I, I, I mentioned, I, I, I know nothing about these guys. Um, sure. UMass at New Mexico State. The That's Aggies right. the Aggies are favored by six. This is this game is at 3 p.m. Saturday. We're taking this. This is our this is our grand finale, by the way. Grand finale. Um, AJ Fun Index of 58.5. Mm-hmm. This, AJ, this is your chance to break down the reverse college football playoff. That's right. We're going to rank the bottom four teams. Okay. Um, because it's all about who is the actual worst team Ooh. in all of FBS. Ooh. Now, UMass and UConn have played. Mm-hmm. UMass won by 10. Mm-hmm. At home, their one win of the season. They have lost to multiple FCS teams this year. Right? They lost to URI and Maine and by like multiple touchdowns. UConn has one win on the season, and that is over Yale on a last-second bat down to win the game. They almost lost that one, too. Yep. New Mexico State has one win this year over South Carolina State. And if we need to throw in a fourth team, uh, might I suggest the Akron Zips? They've been real bad this year, too. They have. They have. Uh, Oh, you beat them. So, yeah. yeah. So what I'm thinking here is – if I had to rank the worst team in all, if I had to go, t- if I had to drop my bottom four, I'm going UConn one, UMass two, New Mexico State three, Akron four. I think that's where I'm leaning here. UMass getting the two spot over the one spot, even though they've lost to multiple FCS teams by having the head to head victory over UConn. I think that's really where I'm leaning here. Mm-hmm. I want, I need to see New Mexico state UConn. I think we need to have a truly really trash bowl game, like a, um, 
what's the bowl game we could put them in? Um, Birmingham, something in Birmingham. I'm sure they could they could just run at Legion Field like on fr- on a Wednesday at like noon. Just you know, just make sure the door's unlocked. That, that game is always it's like raining and cold and miserable, and that, that sounds about right. Right. So I'm just sitting here thinking. I think UConn is my is still my number one. A lot of people wanted to put Arizona down here, and I don't disagree. Mm. Arizona's looked real butt all year. I just can't get over the fact that UConn lost to UMass. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, uh, Carla, do you have a, a thought here about this game or who the worst team is? I, I would tend to to agree with 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 UConn, um, yeah. but I think they've at least made a decent hire. I think uh, they could well, turn, start turning I, I things around. I don't know how they looked year. into that, but yes, yes. Um, to, uh, yeah, sure. UConn's they, probably the worst team. They said, hey, Jim, you bored? Yeah. You want to come coach us? I guess. That was uh, it. That was the contract. <laughs> we'll give you some money. It'll be fun. No big deal. You win a couple games. That'd be awesome. Uh, I, I, I got UConn here. Uh, it clearly, it, that, that the program was a mess. It, it may not it, it may not translate that way uh, as we go forward, but um, – yeah, that, that's that's. I think it's a pretty clear choice. Also, for the first time in history, I can look at AJ and say, "Don't watch this game." Don't watch. <laughs> you know what? I've already figured out how to, and it involves New Mexico cable TV stations. Let's go! Oh, good <laughs> Lord. oh man, I so, watched, I'm sorry. I watched UTEP New Mexico State that way. I'm sorry. Is, excuse me. Bull bound UTEP. All right, AJ. That that is on brand as it gets for you. Mm-hmm. Uh, boys and girls, you can hear the Carla and Crappy Show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, uh, Google, Stitcher, TuneIn, a whole bunch of other uh, podcasting services. You may watch this show on YouTube and or the show's Facebook page. If you like us, please subscribe, rate, and review. If you don't, mind your own damn business. Um, the next line in this in this read uh, may not apply because you can check back on Tuesday and see like immediately how wrong we were uh boys and girls what are your final thoughts uh aj please uh we are keeping one eye just one one. on wake forest boston college because pitt clinched a spot in the acc championship game they did and if wake forest beats boston college they also lock up a spot. Pit Wake Forest ACC Championship game. We did it, everybody. I have no idea why we, I am so excited about the possibility of that game, but I am. So let's do it. Let's do it. Go Wake. Carlos. This is a reminder think? that, oh, by the way, real quick, this is a yes. reminder that Pitt, if Pitt has now been to the ACC Championship games multiple times and Miami has never been to the ACC Championship game, continue. Uh, please just bring that up every week for whatever reason. I, I don't even care why, but uh, please do. Carla. Your a final thought? I know you just said don't watch Penn State Sparty, but Penn State Sparty could be interesting depending on the health of both Sean Clifford and Kenneth Walker. Um, so if neither of those two, um, if, if, if neither of them players aren't in 100%, that game could get real stupid. Um, sleeper game to keep an eye on, Wisconsin at Minnesota. That's a real intriguing game. Minnesota has been in a lot of the games they got two head scratching losses but mm. but otherwise i mean wisconsin's trying to make sure that they get into the big 10 title game they need to beat minnesota and it's at minnesota row the damn boat um plus, plus uh, that's like the the um uh, the, if we go back to the uh the pork and beef divisions i forget which one i assigned to which but i i'm giving that the the, the pork division championship just whether or not it means anything, the actual standings. That, that's a, also that's game. that's the Paul Bunyan's axe game, isn't it? Uh no, that involves a Michigan. I don't remember which one, but I, I'm pretty sure there is a trophy involved. No, Paul Bunyan's axe. Oh, Paul Bunyan axe game. Also, it this is, is Land Grant Trophy Minnesota, Week. It's Land Grant Trophy Week. It is Minnesota, Wisconsin. Is the Paul Bunyan axe game? Mm, okay. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And also the the um the, the the conflict trophy made an appearance this week too. Mm-hmm. I, I should have put that in my in my in my best thing I've seen this week, um because uh, Central Florida found it in whatever storage unit it was in and and put it out and tweeted about it and it was pretty epic, especially the responses to that tweet. Final thing from me, um, 
MTSU, I have to say this because I, I teach there and I've got Please? students there. MTSU at Florida Atlantic. This is this is for a bowl game. Winner gets a bowl game. Go freaking Blue Raiders. Oh, I like it. I like it. Um, as you there is a there is a Paul Bunyan trophy involved with Michigan and Michigan State. And then I'm scrolling down, and there Paul Bunyan's axe. Yes, the axe in particular is is uh, Minnesota Wisconsin. I, I just I, I tend to think that should be a big picture. A big I know the Florida Verge sale exists, but I think that should be a, a large a large uh, 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 animal part of, of the pork yes. variety. My the trotters, one, just trotters only. Yeah, that's all. Yeah. Um, my one final thing, since we have apparently return to normal here thanks to carla's return and and hopefully that's that is going to continue i'm going to take this one opportunity briefly to thank everyone who has helped uh in her absence because we have we have had awesome shows um we have uh, it has been cool to have a variety of other people other viewpoints involved um and and i it, it's been it's it's been a really cool experience uh, we made the best of Carla's absence, um, and, and and absolutely, we are happy that she is back this week. So, uh, Nubias Wilborn, Gabby Biltz, Tyler Batiste, Kelly Creek, Braden Gall, Kim Tabu. Thank you, guys, uh, for sitting in on the show. Um, we we love the perspectives that that all of you brought. I also want to thank Jake Rose, uh, who was willing not once but twice. And then not once but twice got last minute announcing gigs and couldn't and, and couldn't join us. I also want to thank uh, Patrick and Emily, our my my our, my great friends in Columbus, uh, my tailgating buddies in Columbus. They were willing. Um, we did not need to to to, to grab them. Um, the last thank you goes to AJ. AJ, hi. hi. Um, <laughs> interim AJ, co-host we uh yeah, interim, interim co-host, co-host interim co-host and and ken jennings of the carlin crappy show um aj was slotted to to handle one co-hosting weekend for a, a big group of five uh, a week and he handled two others so uh, and i was willing at the last minute to jump in so that has been spectacular everyone thank you uh, for making this a great regular season uh we will be back next week with championship aj championship championship championship, championship week championship week um i'm gonna miss uh, you coach o. i'm gonna i'm gonna send yeah i know well i'm gonna send uh ellie like a permission slip to see if if uh, carla is allowed to join us again uh for championship week <laughs> I, don't know I think she- we, I think we'll make that work. That was that was always the goal was that I'd be back for championship week, and <laughs> I made it back a week earlier than that. So, thank you, oh, dear one. Man. Oh man, it's it's awesome to have you back. Um, it's good to uh, be back. And yes, thank you to all the co or to all the guest hosts. That was that was really awesome that you that you guys kept the show going. And um, thanks to all them for for chipping in their time. It was it was really cool to just kind of sit back and listen. It has been it has been a very cool experience. Um, but hey, we're we're back where we're supposed to be right now. So that's that that is awesome. Everyone, you guys, uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for listening. We appreciate you and everything you do for us. And uh, enjoy the games Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and we will see you back here next week for Championship Week. Cheers, everyone. Happy Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving. Exactly. Have a great weekend, everyone. Thank you.